Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we are going to do a uh, B-Bender lesson. So uh, I've had a lot of requests for this. And of course, after the episode where I had a B-Bender installed on this guitar, I thought it'd be fun to do a little, uh, little B-Bender lesson. And uh, yeah, just some chords, shapes and such that I use and that I find are really helpful for doing, uh, for playing B-Bender stuff. So just a quick pause for the cause. If you've been enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed yet, we'll go down in the corner. If you've subscribed and been enjoying the show, well, then I appreciate you supporting it because that's what keeps it going. So there's tip jar information in the description. Then at AskZach.com, there's uh, merchandise, uh, t-shirts, mugs, etc. And then there's Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support me on a monthly basis. And I really appreciate you guys that have signed up for that. Thank you. All right, so you've got your first B-Bender and you're kind of learning how to use it. Well, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of tips and tricks. First thing is you need to make sure that your, uh, your guitar is in tune and intonated and that you have the tension set to where when you're playing, normally it doesn't just activate on its own. Also you need to make sure that it's in tune when you, when you activate it. So, you know, you can just use a tuner and uh, make sure that when you play open, it's going from B to C sharp. Those are, uh, you know, important tips because tuning is, is really everything. So here are uh, my favorite uh, chord shapes, and I'm just gonna stick in the key of A, and I'm just gonna be throwing these out there. So this is uh, chord shape number one, and this is the most basic one. It's basically an A, you know, add nine chord. Now this, and then you just use the bender with it. And then it's just however you decide to, you know, use your pick and fingers or strum it or what have you. And then you can add other, uh, other things to it. So uh, I'll take the other part off and I'll just do it open so you can hear what it sounds like when you add a sixth or seventh note to it. So there's your sixth, here's your seventh. have a A7 kind of chord shape where you just use one finger on, you know, on the D string on the second fret and you get this. Then you can, while you have it bent up, you can bring down your first finger on the first fret on the B string and you can get a suspension. You can also hit this, uh, you can hit the, uh, the tonic, you know, or the A note, you know, on the high E string right here, and you can be on the third fret on the, uh, on the B string, and you can get this, this thing. And then you can, uh, yeah, you can resolve it by removing the finger. Here's another handy, you know, kind of chordal shape. And I'm just barring across with my first finger and, you know, hitting, you know, the, uh, the D and G string. And then I've got my uh, third finger covering the B and E strings and you get this. That's uh, an, another, you know, favorite because it's got that dominant seven and, you know, all sorts of good things going on. Uh, then here's an A9, and this is not your typical A9 like you think if you're playing like funk chords right here. It's, it's right here. And, uh, you know, your, your second finger is on the fifth fret on the D string. Your first finger is on the fourth fret on the G string. And then your third finger is barring the B and G, and you get this. That I learned from Albert Lee. 
uh, off the, the Ricky Skaggs tune, um, Honey, Won't You Open That Door? Uh, Mel Tillis wrote that. And uh, it has this great move where he plays that over the two chord because it's in the key of C, you know. That kind of thing. And then in the solo, it goes to the two chord, which is a D, and then it goes to the five, which is A. And so you have this. So again, here's that shape, but you're playing it at the 10th fret. That's a really useful one. It's also really useful for if you're playing the, the Chuck Berry song, Memphis, you know, of course you have the. Normally you do. And the. What you can do instead is again, using that ninth chord shape. And then of course do illegally wrap your finger, your thumb over the top and you get this. So that's another uh, fun one. Um, then you kind of come up to uh, another, you know, big uh, B bender uh, chordal shape, and that's this um, A7 right here inverted. And of course, when you activate the bender, you're pulling this dominant seven up to the tonic, up to the A note. You're going, you know, from the G to the A, and so you get this. And you know, Albert Lee and Ricky Skaggs have used this a bunch, and There I added the suspension. Another uh, very uh, popular thing. So then let's take that, uh, let's keep playing in A, except instead of playing this A dominant seven, let's just play a regular old um, A chord in this inversion. And let's add when we activate the bender, we're going to bring this pinky onto the uh, tenth fret, and so you get this. What you're doing there is you're getting a cadence where you're going quickly from the five chord back to the one. So you're giving kind of a, you know. that has a very nice steel guitar type effect because you're kind of going quickly between an E7 and an A. So you get. And then you can follow it up by playing this suspension, which gives you a quick cadence between a D, the four chord and the A. And then you follow it up with your kind of first position A, uh, A add nine, however. So here's the whole thing. Of course on this last part, I'm, I'm hammering on on the D string and then, you know, rolling with my picking fingers. So that one's uh, really, really fun. And then you have kind of your just 
two string kind of things that are really popular. You have this. You know, just on the on the B and E strings, or this. And that's, you know, your, uh, you know, your third fingers on the fifth fret and your first fingers on the, on the third fret. And again, we're staying in the key A. What's happening is you're getting this really nice rub between these two notes. Because you have the sixth and then the dominant seven, which are only a semitone apart. And so you get this really cool clash. Uh, and then of course you have this, uh, which you know, it, you know, you're pulling it up a whole step. So what you're getting is a, a unison when you do it. So, you know, again, first fingers on the fifth fret, uh, my pinky is on the eighth fret and you get this. And that's really useful for doing, you know, climb ups and such, uh, you know, you know. things like that. So I've thrown a lot at you, but, uh, but these are, are really good kind of starting points to, uh, you know, to, to really getting on it. I think another thing that I would highly recommend is, you know, the, uh, Albert Lee solo on Amy Lou's poncho and lefty is a really good one because you have this That's a really good one to work on because it's not it's not as much of the chordal stuff, but it's uh, using it in a really neat way. And uh, yeah, you can uh, learn that. And uh, funnily enough, a a great way of of learning licks is this this tool that um, Fender sent me, and uh, it's called a Mustang Micro. It's about a hundred bucks, and uh, it's a fantastic practice tool. And uh, the, the reason being is that, uh, one, it has all these great sounds in it, you know, of course, models of different amps, and you've, you've got EQ control, and you've got effects on there, you've got like chorus and delay and overdrive and, all, and flange and rotary effects and all sorts of things, and you can change them. And uh, then what I found super helpful is, you know, of course, you, uh, you plug in your headphones here, of course, that plugs into the guitar like normal. Uh, but you can connect your phone to it via Bluetooth and in whatever streaming service you have, you can play along with tracks. So let's say you know, you're wanting to learn uh, Poncho and Lefty. Well, you can loop Poncho and Lefty over and over, going over and over again and you can play along with it. Also, uh, via USB, you can record straight into a computer. Uh, great sounding little unit and uh, I, it's fantastic, and I've been using this a lot, uh, you know, at night when, uh, when I, after the kids go to bed, this is a, a really nice thing to just plug in. It's easy because you just plug it in, plug your headphones in there, and you can just practice there, and you can practice along with, you know, other audio tracks and things like that very easily and just use your phone to control that. So really cool thing from, uh, from Fender. You yeah, know, check that out. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, B Bender lesson, and we'll probably uh, do some more depending on uh, how y'all uh, respond to this and, and like the uh, B Bender lesson. And uh, just thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.